The failure of Silicon Valley Bank sent shivers through the entire banking industry, particularly when it comes to the trust depositors place in their own banks. We spoke with Brian Moynihan, chair and CEO of Bank of America, about the lasting effects of what we've seen. Well, I think at the end of the day, it, 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 crisis is too strong a word, and words like that get used a lot. Uh, and, uh, but at the end of the day, there was a, a fair amount of disruption for a few weeks there. Well, certain business models were sorted through. And, but on the other hand, you could see, and we could see, the stability in the other business models, which were the way, you know, way banking is done, great granular business and stuff. And so the good news is you're seeing the earnings by you know, the broad industry come out this week. You're seeing you know, things have, have sort of played out that way, which is very specific business models because the, of unique circumstances of the last 24 months of or 36 months of massive amount of the cash uh, uh, put in the system and then rates changing caught people and those had to be sorted out. The good news is the basic industry has reported good earnings um, across the board. Um, deposits have come down, but that's intended by the Fed taking money out of the system. It's got to come out of somewhere. Banking system is what they want to do to, you know, frankly make credit tighter and help slow down the economy. So that's gone on. But you look at the capital, liquidity, and, the, and earnings power of all these companies have been tremendous. And, that, and that's, that's reassuring to people, and that's good news, because in the end of the day, the banking system reflects the economy in America and economies around the world, and, and, and you, know, you hope it's in good shape, and it is. There's no question it's good shape. Are banks at an inherent disadvantage on their business model? In this sense, you're funding by demand deposits. The people, by definition, can pull whenever they want. And you're putting into long-term assets uh, you know, that are long-term, uh, as opposed to some of the private credit outfits who get locked up capital yeah. for a long period of time that they can match with the assets. Do you have an inherent mismatch in the deposits versus the assets? Well, and we manage that. That's why we have outcome management and a team of people, and that's managed to maintain the balance and that sensitivity. So up 100 basis points, we make $3 billion more in an I, and down we, we make $3 billion less on a base of you know, $55 billion a year. So it's a little bit of movement of money, but that's how you balance it, because the entire balance sheet moves, and everybody looks at certain parts of it in this part. Um, so it's, it's, it's the way you manage money. So our consumer customers, I don't know, 80 odd percent of the balance have been here, for customers for 10 years plus. Um, you know, it's, it, and even our commercial side, same thing. You know, all, the, all the balance of people have been relationships for a long period of time. These customers have been running around for decades, you know, decades and decades in some cases. Um, and so they're very stable. It's just a matter of the ebbs and flows of the rate environment will change the profitability. But you say, is a business model flawed? There's only four companies that have made more than $15 billion in America in the last eight years in a row. Two of them are banks. And so I don't think the business model is flawed. As the head of Bank of America, you have an almost unique uh, insight into the American economy, and specifically the consumer. I know you said that March over March, consumer spending is up. At the same time, you're taking more provisions against yeah. possible some losses on some line. What does that tell you about what's around the corner? Are you seeing the end of the, the spurt in consumer spending? So uh, three, three different topics. One is consumer spending in March was up 9% over last March across all the different forms. In April, that slowed down a little bit. We'll see how it ends up, but that slowed down. It was slower in January, February, picked back up in March. That, that means the, the consumer is still doing things. They're traveling. It's a lot more travel. Outside, out the home experiences, so-called theaters, et cetera, concert tickets, you know, sporting events, everything's going strong there. Uh, when you look at April, you're seeing it slow down a little bit. The debate's going to be, is that due to some of the tax timing and stuff? Because that's changed this year. We'll see it play out. But uh, the consumer's in good shape. They have more money in their accounts than they did by the pandemic by multiples, especially the lower stratas. The ones that don't have it are the, are the wealthiest consumers on our platform because they put the money into the, into the first in the market, now into the, in the money funds. Um, so they have money. The credit quality, our charge, our freight this quarter um, was a number of which is about a third under where it was in 19, to give you a sense. I think, uh, but that's a 53-year low in 19. So the credit quality is you know, unbelievable. And so that's good news. Um, are we putting out provisions? Yeah, because we keep planning on this recession. It seems to always be out there <laughs> that we haven't gotten to yet. But, um, and then the, the third thing is the consumers have capacity to borrow. So the usage of our lines of credit on the consumer side, home equity loans are down, 
by from 30 billion in outstandings to 20 billion outstandings during the pandemic, and the card lines are down from probably 100 and some billion down to about 90 billion. They were down as low as 70 and come back up. So there's plenty of borrowing capacity for consumers. So that means the consumer is going to be there and employed, which means the job of the Fed is tougher. And that's why the Fed has to be more resilient because the consumer drives the U.S. economy and the consumer is still in the game and the consumer is still employed and we're paying uh, our colleagues and teammates more than everybody in the room. And then they have money in accounts and they're spending. And that's not true for every single human being in America, but it's the average is true that way. That was Brian Moynihan, chair and CEO of Bank of America. To get the full picture, we also talked with the leader of a distinctly local bank. Darren Williams is CEO of Southern Bank Corp. That's a community development financial institution serving those living and working in the Arkansas Delta. The failure of Silicon Valley Bank and other banks, it's, it's a failure of banking 101. It's a, it's a managing assets and liabilities, right? And so we don't have uh, more than 90% of our deposits held to maturity. We don't have more than 90% of, uh, of our investments held to maturity, our deposits that are uh, you know, above the FDIC insurance limits. And so we know our customers, we know how to protect them, uh, and, and we're doing a solid job. And it's caused unnecessary angst, but we're trying to relieve those fears. A lot of concerns, as you suggest, about withdrawal of deposits. Yeah. And we've seen deposits go down at a lot of banks. Did you lose deposits because of this? Yeah, fortunately we didn't, again, because we know our customers. And we're on the phone and we call them. Uh, and we let them know that their deposits were safe. Uh, and, and you know, one thing we're actually seeing, we actually uh, are seeing people who care where their money spends at night. They want to bank with an institution that is mission focused, that's focused on serving the real economy. And so we're actually gaining some deposits. And so I know that's not true across the board. And, and, and I'm a little concerned about some of the deposits running from your regional and, and community banks, but that's not what we faced. There are some are proposing that we really increase the level of insurance, uh, well above $250,000 to a million dollars or even beyond that. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think that may be a smart idea, right? In an effort to relieve the fears and calm the fears uh, so it wouldn't be more run on the banks, what the federal government did in saying we're going to protect all the depositors of Silicon Valley Bank it was smart. But what it did, it actually created this idea that some banks are safer than others, right? Uh, that some banks are too big to fail. I think community banks, we're too important to fail because we're banking Main Street. Uh, and if we don't have the deposit base, then we can't lend to the small businesses that we lend to who actually create the jobs in America. Darren, do you have any concern at all that the government starts guaranteeing all deposits, no matter how limited, uh, how, how big they are? that they'll start getting into your business more. Because typically when the government gives you something, they ask right. for something back. Right, right. Uh, well, clearly that's a concern, uh, and we'd rather, we'd rather not have that. Um, but we want to ensure that our customers feel safe uh, because it is important that the community banks have those deposits because that's the base of which we use to lend to small businesses who create the jobs in America. And so we're pretty excited about uh, these opportunities that we see coming from this. Um, we want to relieve our customers' fear, but at the heart, America's economy needs a diversity of institutions. Not, not every um, community has a large money-centered bank. So yeah. in, in seven of the markets we serve, we're the only bank in town. In six, we're one of only two. So that's 13 markets where there, you know, there's not, there's not much, much choice. And the banking space is consolidated. So 15 years ago, there were, what, 15,000 banks in America? Today, 4,500. Yeah. So we're serving people who often are not served well by larger right. banks because they're, they're just not present.